Oh, hello, my peeps. <clears throat> I think, oh, the gods are smiling on me. I think I'm now live on Facebook. Do I know if I'm live on Facebook? No, I don't. I have no idea. Let's be honest. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mute my computer again because of course I did. I tell you, one of these times I'm going to borrow my son's GoPro and I'm going to strap it on my head and I'm going to do a behind the scenes of a live and I'm going to film the live and I'm going to film like the beforehand part of like getting ready for it in the, on the, on the GoPro and then I'll do a live and then afterwards also, and this is what you don't see to get a live to work. Oh, in particular, technology. Ah, see, now I'm all look all fuzzy. I'm trying to see if I can get comments. So somebody can tell me if this is actually working. Oh my goodness, I see two. Does that mean two people are watching? Two people have had the stamina to wait for me to, to conquer technology. Well, God bless you. Okay, let's see. Let's get the right screen. Okay, I got the thing muted. Oh, hello, Tamara. Oh my goodness, it has been a battle today. Okay, I have to get started though. And I'll tell you why. Hi, it's Tracy, the paper pusher, coming to you live from beautiful downtown Mournville on this Friday afternoon. Yes, I'm supposed to start at 12.15. And today I decided, darn it, I'm going to go until I make this work. And then I'm just going to go as long as it takes to heck with schedules. But I can't actually do that because any minute now I'm going to get a phone call, <laughs> probably during the middle of this, to tell me that insert you know you're an adult win moment uh my new washing machine is being delivered and i'm super excited about not having to go to the laundromat once a week to do laundry it's my own fault the, the washing machine broke six weeks ago and i just hate shopping and so i did not want to like put the time into shop and buy but but i did finally and now it's getting delivered <laughs> i'm very excited but anywhere between 140 and 440 Yes, that's my three hour window. You need to work on your video. It's freeze frame, choppy, watchable. Yeah, I don't know what it is. You know what? I'm going to go back over. I was going to start with my like full face um, cam and then switch to the overhead cam because I can do that. I mean, I know how, but it's just so, you know, don't touch anything because you finally got it working. Um, it seems to go better when there's not two cameras going. Uh, my IT department has not uh, devoted enough time to solving that problem, as I've asked him to. So anyways, yes, time is of the essence. Um, I will finish whatever I don't get done in the time I have today, and then I will just post them. But I'm gonna, I am gonna—I had some tips and everything. So I've, I've come up with a new name for our, uh, I made it, I moved my camera. Yes, touch nothing, there we go. Um, so now we have the Friday catch up. You see what I did there? If nothing else, I amuse myself. So welcome to Friday catch up. <laughs> I do love my Canva. Okay. Oh, first I have to, here's a question. And actually maybe Tamara, you will know the answer. And you can just tell me. This is our July. I have so much stuff in my way that I was going to show you all these things. You know what? I'm not going to get to the blending brushes. I don't think so. How about I just move those out of the way? And ooh, I didn't even knock them all over the place. So that's remarkable. Okay, so this is our July <laughs> calendar, or sorry, wreath uh, offering. Um, instead of just one day of maple leaves, let's just celebrate the beauty that is Canada all the time. So I posted this on my like Tracy Stewart profile on Facebook, thinking if I put it there, everybody will see it. Because if you, it, like, I don't think you can get to my paper pusher page without being, but I honestly don't even know anymore. So I thought I would show it. I could show it more like this. It looks better. But so this is our C2C on Canada. And yep, it was over the top, but it was a lot of fun to make. <laughs> so it hangs on my uh, it hangs on my camera stand. So once I put my camera stand back in after the sale, um, I have lots of shadows. So I decided to put the camera stand on the other side. Guess what? More shadows. <laughs> but by the time I realized that, I didn't have time to change it. 
So there we go. Okay, so this is what started it all. This is actually card number two. And I'm gonna show you card number one last because that's how I roll. So this was my challenge, was to take this freaking adorable bird's eye view stamp set and make a card a week. And if you remember the everyday thanks one I was making, I'm trying to keep them a little simpler. So yes, this is simple for me. <laughs> um, it is simply stamps, ink, and paper with the exception of one rogue punched out shape that was on my desk that I added in here. That could have been a square. So yeah. Stamps, ink, and paper. Look at, you can do so many things with it. So this was actually card number two, as I said. And in my, you know, mind, creative mind, this is the sky behind it, right? The sun and the clouds and the sky. And, you know, those were the colors. My original thought, though, was to do it um, with different colors. So my, that's my one other card I'm going to make, right? Sure. So as I'm getting ready to make it, and I'm mentioning to my son how adorable it is, because, oh, my God, if I do say so myself, it's adorable. My son goes, well, you can't just make one, you gotta make four. Great, so I have to make four. So while I'm in the process of making four, and yes, I mean, just the suspense is gonna kill you, but you'll figure it out eventually. I'll show you eventually. <laughs> um, in the process of making four of them, oh, I just moved my, my brushes and I buried my, my seal that I need. Um, I decided, oh, you know what? Instead of cardstock, you know what would look good? Boom, now it's eight. <laughs> So this is how my this card has evolved. But I'm going to show you the bits and pieces and parts of everything I've done. So first up, when I made this card and I posted it, I said, and you could like make the stripes in the background any color. So let's make the stripes in the background a different color. Now I'm going to show you what I did. In this case, because I'm only using two colors, um, I did try with them being all the same size. These are three quarter inch strips is the garden green and a half inch strip is the smoky slate. And I did try them all the same size and it was too big. It was too close to the edge. I like this little bit of white on either side. So I cut them down to half inch for this. And you'll see afterwards, I, I wanted the dominant color was the bigger color. So this is my trick, I will tell you, for lining things up. <laughs> it works for me, maybe it'll help you. I just rough fit all of this stuff and they're not necessary, although I did pretty good this time, they're not usually straight when I do it. But the point is to get them all put together with them cut as I cut them because Lord knows we're all human and they may or may not be cut straight. And if you have anywhere to cut better one way or the other, this is the time to fix it. And so I was lining it up so I was getting even on this side, right? Because that's what bugs me more than anything. A little bit of leeway in the middle I can deal with because I'm going to cover it with stuff. But if these two sides are not straight and even, it bugs me. So I get this to the point of where it is by just kind of dry fitting this, right? So now I know that this is where I want the middle one to be. So what I'm what I'm doing is none of these are, are glued down at this point. But what I did with this is I did this and then I held on to these two and I moved these out of the way. So now. And thank you to Shauna. Every time I do this, I think of Shauna, who, when the seal first came out, there's all sorts of tips to how to make it work better. Um, I am a dork, I know. <laughs> and so you can use it on your silicone mat. But as you can see, I can't actually get to my silicone mat right now. And it was actually her tip that you could use your hand to do it. So every time I rub my seal across my knuckle, I think of the lovely Shauna in Saskatchewan who showed us that. Okay. So then I'm going to put this on and now I'm pushing up against the piece I'm holding because I already know that this is where this should go. And before I firmly push it down, I am going to take it out now that I have no distractions in my way. And I'm just going to make sure that it looks straight. Now, because I know what the thing on this is, eh, somewhere's a ruler. I could measure, but hey, that's not how I roll. And then I'm going to push this down. I tend to line up the top because the easier is the easier. The bottom is easier to trim, right? So now that I got that one on, so now this is easy. Now I just put the other ones on beside it because that one is now my anchor point for the center of the card. And these ones should go in straight. And I just, like I said, I'm just pushing up against them. And I have to finish this one so you can see the, the full effect of what I'm about to show you. <laughs> the big dramatic reveal that you've been waiting all week for. So. Well, I glue these little strips on. 
I'm going to tell you the things I was supposed to tell you. Excuse me, my paper fell. <clears throat> okay, so our extravaganza, if you're going to register for extravaganza, um, if you have been to one before, you get early dibs on doing it, which is this week, and it is already a quarter sold out. Uh, we have done three of them in the past and they have all sold out because they are so much fun. Um, it is a good day of making craft projects, yes, but it is also visiting and snacking and seeing new stuff and, oh, it's just such a fun day. So yes, that is up. If you've been, if you have not been before and are like, darn, this is the time I'm going, on Monday it opens to the public so everybody else can have their chance to register on Monday. Um, you need to register using the link. Myself and Tamara will post it all over the place. There's a QR code you can scan or there's a link. You need to use the link because I need the information that is in the registration form. And then there's a, my email address is in there so you can send the registration fee. And once I get the registration form and the registration fee, then I will send you an email saying you're registered. I do not send it if, if we only have part, I send it when we have all. Um, there is an option for a bundle because we don't actually know the projects yet because we're stamping up some new product release. Uh, I'm just going to flip this over because yes, not everything is cut exactly even. You probably can't see, they're not actually off by that much. But this is why it's easier because if you do it on the front with a single layer, and then you can just flip it over and give your card a haircut if it needs it. Um, yeah, we don't actually know what the Christmas stuff is until the end of the month. So at the end of the month, we'll give you all the details, but we would like you to register and pay the $100 per person, which is includes everything. It's a stamp set, it's stuff, it's things, it's all sorts of stuff. Um, and then once we know what the full product or products that we're using are and what the bundle is, we'll tell you the difference. And if you wanna upgrade to the bundle, then you just pay the difference kind of thing. But um, for right now, it's open and you should register. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Next week is our midweek escape for crafting. Um, there is a new kit that came out with all of the stuff that came out the other day. Um, the truck bundle that was such a hot item, they must have known it was going to be a hot item because while it did go out of stock, the next um, shipment is coming in in a couple of weeks on the 17th. So they must have anticipated that and had more coming and just like got them going faster or they planned it that way. But it's not as long of a wait, but yes, they did sell out. Uh, the clearance rack was refreshed and there was some smoking good deals on there. And they, um, some of them sold out like right as I was putting them in my basket, I was doing stuff for customers and somebody had ordered gold ribbon and I put it in my basket. And then I was getting the other items on her list. And all of a sudden a thing popped up and said, oh, gold, gold ribbon is sold out. We've taken it out of your cart. <laughs> like it was going like that. By the time I was done, and it was a it was a late night. Um, some of the stuff, yes, had sold out. I, I always I'm always curious. I got everything everybody wanted except for that one item, um, but I got all the bundles that people had asked for and stuff. And um, I got all of them. Um, and then in the next morning, I like to go look and you know see what's going on. So here we go. While I was talking, I put the front on this card, and you'll see in a minute. <laughs> so birds can be any color. In this case, the birds are representative of, of people. Two of them are specific people. The other ones are just kind of in general people. And yes, I am using my retired, what are these called? Adhesive back stars, because they look like little explosions and little like, bah. and I am using my retired, because I'm doing thing, two things at once here, because um, I can't ever part with this particular set, Magical Mermaid set, which has a, stamp in it that says hello have a magical birthday and yeah has anybody figured out yet i showed some color schemes before um just gonna I have leftovers i'm gonna find somewhere to put that these are all the leftover pieces of things i was trying so those are my colors that i was using um here's the biggest hint if you wanted the biggest hint of what i'm doing how about these four colors oops just minute, i gotta go have a stray in there no. does that give it away yet I'll show you what, this will give it away. The reason that this bird is yellow is to represent the blonde Draco Malfoy. Come on all you nerds, you know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna have to look at my cheat sheet because I, I get two of them mixed up. So this is one that we know for sure. Yes, I give you Draco and the Slytherin colors. I give you a generic student 
<laughs> and which one again? Ravenclaw. I give you my problem card. This would be Hufflepuff, <laughs> and another generic thing. And I and I can't quite decide here. I'm gonna move these out of the way a little bit. I can't quite decide if it's because this is yellow and this is white. And on camera, it doesn't look as bad. But I, when I look at it, I'm like, I like it. But oops, does it need to be darker on the edges because the yellow and the white are too close in color? But then I'm like, the more I, the more black I put on it, the more bumblebee I see. <laughs> so for now, I haven't decided. But there we go. I give you Hufflepuff. And then my. <laughs> Oh my goodness, when I made this card, I was like, I am such a nerd. Fully, fully accept the fact that I'm such a nerd. I give you Harry Potter. Oh my God. Okay, so when I saw this set to begin with, I, I told you I amused myself if nothing else. It was the glasses and the, like the little monocle that I was, I, I was just like, oh my goodness, and stacks of books. You know, I like stacks of books. So what we have is Harry Potter. And that was the card I was making first before I made a generic bird. And then my son said, no, 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 you have to do all four of them. So I did all four of them and they are pretty cute. <laughs> but then, wait, there's more. If you read my newsletter, you'll get that reference. I thought, you know what, instead of the, instead of the strips of cardstock, Maybe I should sponge the back or like use the blending brush on the back. <laughs> so then we got the blending brush version of Harry Potter, which I do like. I like the strips of cardstock better. I will admit, I like the bolder color better. It's also way easier <laughs> because here's the Harry Potter version and you will notice that the other ones are not finished. So the second card I did was Slytherin. <clears throat> and I just, I could not get the colors, especially the smoky slate to work the way I wanted. I where'd my little pieces, bits and pieces go. Now it does look better <laughs> um, when you cover some of it up. I don't I didn't have all the right pieces on this one. Cause I honestly, I stopped at this point. I was making all the backgrounds and I just stopped because I was like, mm, it's a good idea, but it's in an execution, no. So yeah, when you cover up some of the background it looks a bit better. But for whatever reason, super muddy. So then, well, let's let's just move on. Let's do Hufflepuff. But I had a brand new blueberry bushel stamp pad, and there was little specks in it, and so I kept getting these dark spots. And every time I hit the edge, because it was such a like juicy ink pad, I kept getting these marks. Fine, let's try again. <laughs> I got three quarters of this thing done, and I got this big mark at the top so then I tried to like you know add the thing to get the mark at the top nope <laughs> just made a mess now this one is better these colors did work out better and it is a little bit better eh. and then the biggest lesson though and what I will tell you now is um make sure that at some point here I got way too many things going on again just a minute <laughs> We'll recap in a minute, but I got to move stuff out of my way. Um, if you're going to do the uh, the blending brush version of this, well, here's 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 more tips for you because I had them. So I'm using this paper, and I have to keep moving my strips off out of my way. So here's my tip: use a punch because I have all my little chunks stuck to this punch, which is open on my desk. So it's not sticking to any paper. It's not in my way. It's not anything because they do tend to curl up. Um, but the trick that I did not do is I used the same masking paper for all of them. And it didn't matter as much on the on the darker colors. But as soon as I got to the lighter color, and I actually had this taped to a piece of cardboard. But when I got to the lighter color and I taped it down, and with, with the brushes, you always want to like start off to the side and work your way in. I kept picking up all of the colors. Once it was yellow, you could really see picking up the colors. Um, so if you're gonna do it that way, start with the light colors and work your way to the darker colors. That would have been like tip number one or change out your masking because you can see here all the places where I picked it up darker, <laughs> like every time these little lines. So this was not a, you know, 
it was not the greatest success with backgrounds. Um, and I think it's okay to try stuff and go, hmm, yeah. And I think what I'm going to end up doing, because it's just, it's too much, um, is either, where'd my other thing go? When I was making my original card, I was trying to decide if I wanted to put a banner on it instead of just a little box and then put the dudes on the banner. Now I could do that with this card because it covers up most of them. <laughs> Or I could even put it in the middle and give you a little bit like this so you can still see. Because then it covers up most of the, um, the blending brush that didn't work very well. Here's another trick. If you're not sure when you're designing, just make two. Couldn't decide if the stamp should go at the top or the bottom. Because you won't see it in the end. See, and that's better. Although I do think I have to cover up the mess I made. So maybe one will end up like this. And it'll cover up part of it. But it is also okay just to go, nope. <laughs> and later on, I will use all the salvageable pieces of that. Um, here's the other thing. Doesn't this just look like Hedwig? The adorable brave owl who defends Harry Potter? Yep, I am a total Harry Potter nerd if you haven't figured that out by now. Ta -da. Um, okay, a couple more things because I really I really am gonna have to get moving or I'm gonna be interrupted by the laundry. Um, here's, what, here's the other thing I decided I was gonna do. In, in lieu of, and this is where I don't maybe necessarily have time, but Let's just see. Let's see how far I can get. In lieu of doing the whole background, I really wanted to sponge something. <laughs> I had to sponge. I feel the need to sponge. Um, the other option, and this is not a Harry Potter card necessarily. This was more going back to the, the, um, the original card and making it simpler without the stripes, is to... And I'm, I'm trying to be very delicate because I have no off paper with me right now, like no brush off paper. I'm trying not to get big gobs on this card. So far it's working. So the other option you have though, and I guess you could do this with the Harry Potter colors and maybe get maybe that would give the better look. But I'm just going to give myself some sky. I'm gonna make such a mess by the time I'm doing this because I'm gonna put nothing away in between. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna brush on sky. And then, and it did actually work much better than I thought. Um, blending brushes or daubers or sponges or whatever um, tool that you use, and there has been a few over the years. So this is what I'm recreating. I'm recreating this card in a simpler version, just to give you the idea of what I'm doing. Um, it's practice. It is all practice. You do it the first time. And so I would recommend if you, if you, decide you want to like do a blending brush project. Don't do like I usually do and wait 10 minutes before you have to go and think, oh, I'm going to try that now. Because you really do just need to practice. And you do need to um, be willing to sacrifice some paper in the quest. Um, I just realized that I put my other, I know this is going to shock you all, but I actually put a stamp away. Um, for this card, I actually used the tropical leaf. Uh, which is on the online exclusives, which has this phenomenal font to it. And why am I doing it in this order? Oh, I don't know, just because I am. Um, but I actually had put it away. <laughs> and then that almost never happens. Um, so yeah, the bird's eye view has great graphics. It does not have fonts, but I dare you to tell me there's a stamper out there that doesn't have a stamp set that has fonts in it that they can use to supplement it. Oh, what did I do? Bird. Where'd my bird go? Where's my bird? Bird is the word. Oh yeah, this is. Um, I don't. I, I'm a total nerd. Oh, just a minute. I totally forgot the color of the bird. Um, I'm a total nerd, and uh, I take no offense to being called a nerd, but um, but maybe some people do, and maybe that's why they didn't just call this stamp set "Bird Nerds." Because <laughs> not only is it cute, it's fun to say. Being very careful because my very juicy ink pad, whoo, I got all that ink in the middle of my stamp there, but I did not transfer it to my card. <laughs> whew, okay, that I'm gonna move over so I don't set anything in it. Okay, what else are we doing here? Oh, yes, leaves. Leaves, leaves, leaves. That was blueberry bushel. This is lemon. I do like my bright colors and my bold colors. So the trick with this one is just gonna be because I've decided I'm not coloring anything, right? is uh, just to not get too much of the blue everywhere that you want the green and then your leaves will look more green. 
Ta-da! And then I, I took out the yellow just in case, but honestly, I don't, I can't figure out how a sun would really work into this, so we're not doing that one. So if you would like a super, super simple version, <laughs> and it's still cute. Guys, it is adorable still, because the birds are adorable. Look at that. Same card-ish. Uh, pecan pie for the branch, lemon, lemon lime twist for the leaves, little blueberry bushel for the bird, just so he stands out a bit more. And then if you want to, because, you know, it's adorable. Uh, just a minute. I'm double stamping, so this will be fun. Actually, who am I kidding? So the week has been awesome. The week has been so good and for so many things. And it has been fun, but it has been busy. And a whole lot of it has been on the computer and on messages and stuff. Um, and so that has made it exhausting. So I actually will set myself up for success and actually take the other one that's off. And let's just add his little glasses. They do love the glasses, not just because I wear them, just because it's just, he's so darn cute with them. There we go. I didn't even use the same bird, I just realized now. I just picked a bird. But there we go. How about that one? Super simple stamping. Stamping. <laughs> A little bit of blending brush in the background instead of the stripes. Although you saw me do the stripes, so it didn't take that long. Ta-da! So there's our very adorable bird nerd. I will post pictures later. We have some Draco Malfoy. Uh, I wish I could think of a single name of a person in Hufflepuff, but I will have to read the books again, apparently. Um, all right, thanks, Mara. Um, oh yes, birds of you. Hi, Melanie. Uh, random Ravenclaw. <laughs> Mr. Harry Potter himself and the sponged or the blended background of Harry Potter. Ta -da! I'm having fun with this. I'm just getting started. I've got three more weeks of cards to show you with the bird's eye view. <laughs> so thank you all for the patience of hanging in there until I actually got this to work. And uh, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. And I hope next weekend or next week my technology goes smoother, in which case, um, I have some posts scheduled to go during the week, but I will be alive on Wednesday night and again on Friday at 12 eh, 15 ish. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Have a fantastic weekend. Take care.